welcome to A Wealthy Life. My name is Vicky Boucher and I'm the host. The aim of this show is to help you pinpoint your values and create a plan to live your version of a truly wealthy life, doing more of what you want, more of what you love with those that matter to you most. And that will take time, money and control to create this life of your dreams. I've had times when I've had to track literally every penny, shouldering massive debt. And then after being made redundant and a divorce, I decided I needed to create an independent source of income, something away from traditional employment. I began investing in 2004 and during the property crash of 2009-10, I bought on average one to two properties a month. After just two years of focused investment, I'd secured my financial future. By 2013, I'd been recognised by The Telegraph as one of the UK's top 25 most influential people in property. I've authored five books and property investment has been my ticket to a life of financial security, fun, freedom, adventure, great holidays. It's a life guided by my values and not societal norms. So why not subscribe now and become inspired to create your own wealthy life? Hello and welcome. My name is Vicky Wachey and you'll see that Elizabeth Pearson is with us again today. Very lucky. She was with us a couple of weeks ago talking all things stocks and shares and how you do investing in shares. And we just talked on too long and I didn't get a chance. And there's so much more that I want to speak to uh, Elizabeth about. And so just to in case you haven't heard her before, this is Elizabeth. And she helps women invest in shares and she's got a website and we'll put all the details at the bottom. And we've debunked all the jargon and we talked about how values were important. And I want to bring Elizabeth back for this one because I really want to dig a bit more. And this sort of like little batch of podcasts is looking at specifically what are the challenges for women. Now, don't hang up if you're a man, because there will be some of you of the male variety that have the same challenges as women. But there are all, and then equally, there are women that have all the same traits of men and it's not that delineated. But actually sometimes just turning the microphone, oh, microphone, not the microphone, the, the microscope in and sort of like really examining something from one person's perspective can sort of draw out lessons that are actually valuable to everybody. So that's what I wanna be doing with this. And Elizabeth's going to help me on this. So welcome, Elizabeth, yet again. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Vicky. Lovely to be here again. Thank you. So the last time I sort of hit you with quite a hard question to like unpack stocks and shares, and we're not going to get to that in, in our many conversations. I want to ask you this. How was it that you ended up naked in Hampstead? <laughs> uh, you're remembering it quite our conversation a little differently we were talking about how do I meet my clients that's what we were talking about I think well we but mine sounds so much I know, better it sounds much so, racier it sounds much racier yeah. but I will tell you I will tell you I will tell you so this was um you asked me how I met my clients and I said well just by being generally friendly just being friendly and curious and um I did yeah so I live near Hampstead Heath I go to the Lido and I did end up meeting a client in the shower uh in, in in the Lido and it was hilarious because I used to be an architect we were talking about this it was a, it was a it was a, an image of a sort of floating pool somewhere on the Thames and we ended up having a conversation about that la 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 you know this is what we do and then here we are there we go you know a couple of a couple of months later so so you never know I never know I never know who I might meet and where yeah exactly exactly I still think if I'd started this off with Oh, hi, Elizabeth. So why don't we just start off with uh, how do you meet your clients? Mm, no. How was it that you were naked in Hampstead? Is a much, you know, it's all about the clickbait. That's it what is. you've got to go it for. It totally is. Yeah. Thank you. But I, I, <laughs> I think I think that sort of ties in with with the conversation that we were having last time, which was about making the language of shares, no matter what gender you are, more accessible and something. I think I think you said we don't talk about investing enough or 
money enough or something or we had that piece of the conversation that that that's it it's oh well, I know what it was and you were saying you said the sentence about you know we don't talk about money because we're British it's just not British is it and and we need to be when it comes to money and our financial futures a lot less British but we also need to be a lot less male dominated stack them up high multi-millions so that that it doesn't resonate with people and we've got to change our language do, do you agree I do yeah I think um language in all in all areas can be very excluding by using terms that people don't understand that they don't relate to um and it's you know it's not done consciously or on purpose it just um yeah it, it just it just happens a lot I mean even the word you know, even the word wealth, I think, can be quite excluding for people because it seems to be like it's all to do with the, it's like the have and the have yachts, you know, people have got yachts. Oh, see. People have it. There was a brilliant article about this in the New York Times some while ago. And actually, well, what is, it's it's like, well, what actually is is wealth for me? You know, what does it mean to yes. be, uh, feel secure, safe, um, secure, to have, you know, all those kind of things. So, um, it's just being careful, I think, about not excluding people by the language we use um, mm. and also not using language that is kind of overused all the time, because that that happens a lot as well and also drives me nuts. So, yeah. Now, that's quite interesting that I, I like that wealth. What was it? The wealth and the wealthy yachts say that? No, so it, the have the have and the have yachts. So <laughs> have and the have yachts. It, 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 was, yes. it was about these people i mean people who have so much wealth they used to buy houses big fat houses now they're investing we're well, not investing it's not you know they just buy yachts yachts and i mean i mean it's just i don't know i just yeah it's uh, it's it's sort of extreme wealth yes. uh, so yes and, that, and yeah. there is that divide coming isn't yeah. there of, of yeah. some extreme wealth coming along yeah. and it's it's just it, it endlessly fascinating and that's the thing for me is i was just speaking to a young girl um about her financial plans and, and talking through her financial strategy with her and saying to her, so, you know, at the moment you're doing this, let's call it a job. She's got her own companies and you're generating income, but how do you want to live? What's this circle here? How do you want to spend your time? And do we, can we work out how much that's going to cost? Or do you already know how much that's going to cost? And then how can we take, the other stuff that you've got, maybe the money that you generate from your job, maybe other resources you've got and make them work hard so that they can create the income necessary for you to live this life. So you could stop doing the work when you want to. You don't have to, but you might want to cut down from five days to four days to three days, or you might want to stop or you might want to work for three months of the year and then not three months of the year and then three months of the year. Choose how you want to live in this this um work environment and choose how you want to live in your personal life and then let's get you the income to get you there and that's that that to me is what a wealthy life is when you've mm -hmm. got enough money that you don't have to worry about paying the bills and you can choose how you spend your time and what you spend your time doing and that's so different from the language of our grandparents and I love history, but you go back in history and that's that's just not what women would ever speak about. And I, and I don't know, I haven't yet found the point at which it became rude to speak about money, because at some point in history, if we can find it, there will be a point at which some, not class as in the lower class, the upper classes, but some subgroup of human beings will have decided that speaking about money is uncouth and it's obviously people with money have decided it because people without money wouldn't have thought to decide it and then that has sort of like led through history and we had this conversation briefly didn't it to the point where you know oh women bless you don't don't think about money i i'm i'm the male in this family i will think about it and i've been watching a a drama recently on the tv and the woman is actually very smart because she says a line where, you know, I married a man who was very difficult to get on with, but I did it because I knew that I was securing our financial future for me and for my sister and for my children. And now my son 
who has been in charge of my fortune, because it's still her fortune at the time, has lost all her money for her because he was the one who got to make the investment decisions. And it was really interesting listening to a woman who's who was very, you know, the character is very smart, but she wasn't allowed to invest her own money. Her son had to do it on her behalf. It's just, yeah, it's just a weird way of history not helping, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there used to be this thing in, um, so it came about in the 12th century, this thing called coverture. So it was this idea that when a woman married, then she, her possessions became her husband's. Um, and then that extended over time to actually then the woman herself was her husband's possession. Mm. So it's just taken a you know a long time, and also legally for that to unwind you know, itself, for that to for that to change. Mm. Um, so and thank. Oh, you. if you've got some reference mm. to that, I'd love to be able to go back and read more about that because that's yeah. that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Because all through the the history bits that I read, which tends to be particularly from the Tudors up to the Victorians mostly is is the is the bit that I really like um looking at how political um I don't know partnerships really political partnerships were made between or power partnerships were made between families by by one family literally selling their daughter yeah to another family yeah, you know, and to to make those ties, and uh, and again before that, when we were all busy killing one another all the time, that if if your daughter and my son or vice versa were married, then the idea is that when a war came, we wouldn't fight against one another. So you could see that there was some of that relationship going on, but with that came this this extra bit around money as well. Yeah, and that that's still. I was going to say something quite interesting, something I've done recently already is this thing, there was this period in British history called, or English history called the Financial Revolution. And it was a time when the British English government wanted to finance the war against France. And they opened up all these opportunities to lend money to the government to finance the war. But actually, women had a, a big part in financing that um and through this thing called the loan industry and they were you know they had risky investments it gave them access to the world it was a big I mean it's been overlooked and forgotten and mm. it's quite a, you know it meant that Britain could become their money was used to finance you know their colonial sort of power really so wow yeah I'd, like, so I'd love I'd love to know that <laughs> bit as well yeah I mean it's just it's it's really interesting isn't it when you start to sort of unpack all of these these bits but what I was going to say was this one of the other conversations we had, and this is just draw dropping. I mean, you know, it was a bit jokey about you being naked in Hampsmith, but this is serious. You were talking about, and I'm going to get this one wrong because I've remembered them as a CEO that that someone was in, offered a job. Do, do you remember that story? Yes. Yeah. So this was when I worked in property and um, this was, it was, yeah, it was for, it was for charity and um the the woman who was the CEO of the charity told me that when she was interviewed for the job, this wasn't too long ago, uh, she had been asked whether her husband knew that she was applying for the job. <gasps> I know. Yeah. I so know. she was, I mean, she wasn't just sort of like a little secretary, not that that should be irrelevant. I mean, this is a senior position that you would it. expect the person to to have a degree of knowledge of uh, yeah, she was, ethics. She was, she's very she's a very yeah she's a she's a fantastic woman very capable so yeah anyway. and the board asks her uh, you know so there's still um, this there are still all steps going on. To get, yeah yeah still all going on and I think the thing is and, and we've spoken about this before is it's not it's not us suddenly banging I've never really understood or or dare I even say this word for a lack of proper understanding of it, that we're not being feminist and going, right, right, that's it, up women, down men, if that, I don't even know if that's what feminism says, but we're saying there needs to be a better understanding between us because we are different genders. We do have, as, as you've spoken about before, different images and 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 styles and values and purposes to our lives and, and and I've pulled that up in the the podcast before neither of which is 
fundamentally wrong unless you're not happy with it. And then then obviously it's not right for you. So it's not that it's wrong, but it's about how can we open up conversations? How can we understand more? How can we help the next generations understand things that we haven't got to understand until we're older? How can we help them understand when they're younger? Because that's how we can improve society. That's how we can improve the lives of one another of the world is if if we all understand more, then we don't have misunderstandings. We don't have arguments. We don't have disagreements. We don't have disadvantage. We don't have dis- discrimination, all of those things. Anything beginning with D, it's obviously clearly bad. Um, you know, it's how do we have a conversation that makes everything more transparent and and if we're hanging on to past historical myths and beliefs then that makes it harder to be either a woman in a man's environment which is very much around property possibly you felt that when you were an architect you probably feel that a bit more now when you're a female investor in something a fairly male dominated environment of the finance world and I had it as a, a university lecturer, very much academia is is very male as well as the the property side of things, and before that, air freight, which is also very male. Uh, how do we draw these lessons and share them out to others? Is I suppose another question. Well, I I think it's about um, I think everything things are very unbalanced at the moment. I think, and that doesn't work for anybody. Um, there's a dominant culture which is not including of a lot of people and it's it's not working. So I think it's about having awareness. It's about speaking up. It's about being heard. It's about, you know, the people use the term equity, equity you know, creating equity on so many levels. Um, and it's, yeah, it's not, it's, yeah, it's like an ongoing thing. It's not easy always. Um I've got my fingers crossed. <laughs> yes. I think it's it's easier. I don't know. I, I, I find it's yeah, it's it's easier now to have conversations or just just awareness. There are certain things now that just wouldn't be said. There's certain things are now that's still being had, but it's it's not working. It's the, it's just everything is very unbalanced, mm. uh, excluding everybody, um, including people works because we all live on this planet. We've all got to get on together. Uh, we all need to do something really quickly. Otherwise, there's not going to be this precious little place we have anymore for us to, to to play on. I mean, it's an amazing thing. There isn't anything like this anywhere in the universe. Uh, so it's a very precious thing to take care of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to, I mean, that's it. That endless. I'm, we're so fortunate to be in this position to to be experiencing this version of ourselves aren't we I mean we we could have we could all have been fleas or amoebas or ants or yeah. or poor bees that have to work and all of that sort of stuff you know we could we could have been anything but how lucky we are to be manifest in in this way mm-hmm. and and as you write it's it's not it's not just a gender thing the the way of the language and when we mentioned it slightly earlier you know the difference between the have have nots and the have yachts. Did I get that right that time? The haves the, and the have yachts. The haves and the have yachts. The haves and the have yachts. Um, it you know, that is just unreal. It, I, I'm, I'm endlessly, endlessly stuck. And at one time, I, I, I tried out for a TED talk and and didn't get picked because they didn't appreciate my approach. And and what I was talking about was three things which have sort of like mellowed and and fed into other things about I believe that we all need to be responsible responsible for our own lives if we take more responsibility and we're less reliant on others particularly for example we're less reliant on the government which has become a bit more like almost of a nanny state that it's constantly interfering constantly fiddling all you need to be doing is just generally running all the stuff make sure the bins are emptied fund all of those things, fix the holes in the road. Those are the things that people want. And yes, in order to do those things, you need to collect some tax, stick that in. And then the last thing I need you to do is a bit of legislation, some rules. So you can't stab people, you can't rob from people. 
I think that's pretty much all I needed to do. And of course, along with the whole potholes is the, the healthcare system, which we are very fortunate to have in the UK. So you just fund that stuff, stick a bit of framework around it, and then then crack on and, and leave everything else alone. But in in doing all of that, we could then be more responsible for our lives so that we don't drain you of of the taxes that you've collected so that you can focus on spending the money on the things that we need you to spend the money on because I can't go out there and fill holes and yes I could take my recycling down to the the tip but I also can't I can take responsibility for my health but I can't do brain surgery or heart surgery on myself so I I need you for some things and I don't need you for other things but I could take responsibility and then to recognize and this is where I think it went wrong I thought well okay they're okay with the responsibility here. I then spoke about enough and having enough and this sort of links in with the financial conversation to recognize that particularly in this country I don't know how much money you've got in the bank but I can tell you for a fact you very definitely have enough and I can tell that because you can afford glasses you're talking to me on some sort of technological device so you've paid for that you can afford the luxury of the plant over your shoulder um you've got pictures on the background so you've been places i know that you can afford things and if you can afford things you've got enough because there are plenty of people out there that can't afford things that don't have enough and then you've probably got more than enough because actually some of the pictures over your shoulder are very nice and you've got the lights on as well. And you've probably got heating because you're not in a, you know, you've not got a sc scarf on and a, and a thick coat. So you've probably got enough heating in your house. So you've got more than enough. And then I went to footballers and then I think this is where I lost them completely. So I put up pictures and I said, you know, we live in a society where we at the moment have like wandered so we value celebrity, we value footballers, we value all of these things. And yet we're, what we're not valuing is the doctors that save our lives, the police or armed forces or whatever that keep us safe and the teachers that, you know, share knowledge and support our children. And, and there's a whole level of people in our society that are not valued financially and actually probably not really obviously other than the clapping that we did during COVID, not really valued for anything else. And yet, we are value we are valuing by the amount of money millions of pounds to for a bloke to kick a ball around a a rectangle on at the weekend yes he has to do some training to do that but a lot of the time they're rolling around on the floor holding their knee i didn't say that bit i've tried watching football but it, they they just it it didn't work they did i just haven't and then i scaled back from being able to speak about this because it just it didn't resonate somehow and I've got to find a way to res and that for me is where this gulf is occurring that that we're being fed by the media these are the things to value and this is where that imagery comes back from the last time we spoke about you know a wealthy man with the yacht with the fast car with the stacks of cash and the bling and the watch and all of that sort of stuff and and yet a woman who's often is responsible for maintaining the family taking the house and everything else is putting pennies into a piggy bank and how do we how do we roll all this to, to a point where we can even it a bit more I don't want everything to be even I don't want everything to be equal because that line is boredom that line is not about progression and creativity but but to take out these peaks and troughs I, please answer please tell me you have a solution I, I it's like this endless thing that I'm I'm grappling with how do and I suppose that's the essence of the podcast how do we share more knowledge how do we make things more accessible and less ex excluding exclusive you've asked me quite a tough question <laughs> 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 Sorry. I don't have the answer to all those things mm. I, I, I don't have the answer I, I suppose for myself, I think, well, where it's about, um, yeah, it's about being grateful for what I have, which is a lot, which is a huge amount. Um, and if I have that, well, what am, how am I going to make a contribution? Everybody has a contribution to make. Um, so this is my contribution. I think, OK, this is where I can make my, you know, I can make a difference to one or two people's lives by, you know, 
talking about my own experience and giving financial education um, and being real about it. I think that's that's all that anybody that anybody can really really do. Um, and yes, you know, I can campaign and I can be conscious about where I put my investments and money and spending and bank and all that kind of thing. And I can write annoyed emails to CEOs, all that kind of thing, having a public voice as well. And then for me, it's about financial integrity. What can I do that means that I feel happy with myself and where I'm investing and what I'm doing as a as a person in the world? Um and lots of people, you know, become wealthy. Many people are motivated because they want to, they want to give it away to be generous. As, you know, that's a really good reason to be wealthy. Um, and some people use their wealth that way, and other people don't. So, you know, that's mm. how. Mm. I, th- I think it was great you brought up that word contribution because that was the third of the three. Take responsibility, recognize you have enough, which is the zone in which gratitude lies. And then how can you contribute? How can you how can you give back? How can you share? And it isn't just about, OK, I'm going to make a, a direct debit to a charity. Sure, you can do that. But don't at that point abdicate the responsibility of contribution by going, oh, well, I give 10 pounds to, I don't know, Air Ambulance or the the RSPCA or whatever. And what else do you do? It's it's not just about that. How else can you contribute? And I love that bit that were you saying. It was about really coming from a place of integrity, talking about your experience and sharing what you've learned, which is all I've done with property. All I've done is some training, some fumbling around and experimenting, make a mistake, learn from the mistake. I think I did a podcast I can't remember. It might have even been the hundredth podcast. So a couple of weeks ago <clears throat> where I was talking about the difference between making a mistake and regret. And for me, regret is that I didn't make a decision. I didn't have a go. I didn't, I didn't do anything and therefore I didn't learn anything and nothing changed. And, and I would regret that. Whereas if I made a mistake and maybe I failed in, in a, a decision, I, I made a I wouldn't have made a bad decision. I would have made a decision that I didn't get the outcome that I had expected. I could learn from it. And we fear failure, but we can learn so much from it. Whereas, and again, it's where the emotion lies. There needs to be no emotion around failure. Uh, And I think that's why I also liked the conversation that we had before, which was with the shares investing, if we bring it back to that, it's so easy to just have you know, one pound in a, in a fund, you were talking about being able to invest in funds that if we had just one pound in a fund and we felt comfortable with that, and then next month we might put two pounds in or five pounds in and that we could, we could experiment with at what point do we reach, or I don't know, I don't, I don't feel like I've put 20 pounds in in a month, but I don't feel like I could put 50 pounds in. Why couldn't you then put 50 pounds in this month? Well, because and it's in that word because that you would learn is it some underlying value around money some underlying fear of failure you talked about people worrying about losing things what is the thing that is now stopping you moving forward and you could learn from that it, it, I mean it's a fascinating experience if only we did this for children to teach them you know here's your pocket money now go buy a share with your pocket mm-hmm. money it, yeah yeah huge difference yeah and it is I mean you were talking about responsibility that word can be very like burdensome but it is like ability to respond you know Mm. so I've made a mistake you know mistakes are good that's where you know that's where you know I've learned the most is mistakes I've made or things I haven't done or uh you know it's good it's good where growth is yeah it's growing as a person growing as a person and who I am and um understanding myself that's all really positive Really if you took 10 steps and every step was successful, you would be 10 steps further away, but you would only be 10 steps further away. If you took three steps and then your fourth step, you failed, it, you misstepped in some way, you might go back to being three steps. But in that that return journey, you would learn and you would then go to step six, maybe. And then you might do seven, eight, and then you might have a misstep. And in the end, in the, for the same amount of time or effort or whatever, you could find yourself 15 steps ahead 
but with so much knowledge that then you didn't have to take your steps one at a time. You could take your steps two at a time, maybe or one and a half at a time. And your your ability to grow, to to influence, to impact in a positive way, to create that legacy is is exponential because you've dared to go beyond what you thought was possible. Success is almost, it, I'm in my comfort zone. I'm doing everything and I'm being, I'm always being successful. So there's no risk. Um, but actually, if you're prepared to sort of push at the edges, know that there is risk beyond the boundary of your knowledge. But with that, you can reach out to someone, you can ask questions, you can acknowledge the risk, you can mitigate the risk. Then then you've got the ability to then grow again, haven't you? Yeah. And I think, I don't know, failure is not such a positive word. It's, I mean, it's like I did something and it didn't work, you know, mm. a bit less loaded. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, absolutely not. And <laughs> I think that's, that's what I picked out of the last time we spoke. I don't know where we wandered off into the middle of the podcast. I've probably got on some hobby horse there or something. Sorry about that. <laughs> but to bring it all the way back around is, to actually be in a position where, as a woman, thinking about investing in shares hasn't sounded quite so risky the way that you said it to me. Um, I don't know if it was because describing what a fund was, that it's it's a, it's a little smorgasbord of, of shares or whatever. And therefore, you know, if, if share number one didn't perform, share 99 might perform. So overall, it will still. So there's that bit. That's one way to sort of mitigate the risk against it. But also, uh, I think you also spoke with shares where I was saying, well, if the value of the share, like if it was a house with the value of a house, if the house goes down in value, unless it's because you've got jobs show up next door but i mean if it's just generally the market's doing it and the values of houses go down well you would hold on to the house mm -hmm. because you still got the income generation coming in and then the value of the house would go up again and yes you're right it might take three seven years till you get there but that would be okay whereas you were saying well you know you need to know when to cut out the dead wood and being so logical so unemotional about it that that it's made it clear that um that this is actually something that's that's achievable to everybody mm, yeah absolutely and I think the first thing is is to invest a little bit in your a little bit of time in your financial education investing is something that can be learned mm. uh, I've learned to do it lots of people learn how to do it um and yeah, what can't what is more difficult is the kind of way to think about it. So not to be, you know, not to have all those roller coasters with your emotions. And if you go into it knowing that it will, there's all those financial declaimers, you know, the value of your investments may go up and down. But things <laughs> will. They will go up and down. And when they go down, you won't like it. You just won't, which is fine. Um, and the thing is not to panic or twiddle or tweak or all those, all those kind of things. Just leave it alone. Uh, for the long term and get on with your life and go dancing that's my yes that's my thing <laughs> <laughs> fantastic fantastic well yeah. look again i i thank you so much for for coming back on and continuing the conversation that we ran out of time for the last time yeah. i'm sure we will have many more conversations like this and um I'm not going to say it yet, but certainly when the weather gets a little better, I'd like to come along to Hampstead for a swim with you. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, that would be yes. great. That would yes. be great. I would quite like to 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 do that. I, we did a little bit of um, cold water swimming when we were in South Africa uh, last year, so I would definitely like to do that. And and we live right near the Thames, but the thought of being run over by a boat is less not appealing. Right. Whereas I'm thinking, you know, in a lie day where there's no one that would be yeah. a bit yeah. safer there. Um, what we're going to do again, Elizabeth, if that's all right with you, is we will put all the links in the show notes. Um, but if people want to get in touch with you, I know that you've said things like LinkedIn, but you've got a website that's got yes, a free please, download. My website. Yeah, it's um, Simple Successful Stocks. Uh, Elizabeth Pearson um, and I've got a really nice complimentary guide to start investing girls just want to have funds uh, which is uh, also also useful to read if you're a man so 
yes. So it. girls, it's just a, it's a groovy title. It's a groovy yes, title, isn't it? Very it's good. Good. Girls and boys. Yes. Mm, yes. No, very <laughs> good. Because I, I do think that actually anybody who's listened to this, who's even remotely interested, that that go and get that download because that will give you a ton of knowledge. And I think you said there's some nice pictures in there as well. So so some supportive fun. images in there to it's really get you on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the architect in you coming out, making things look nice, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yeah. Appealing. Yeah. Design. Design. Yeah. Very design much about the design. <laughs> well, look, thank you very much. And to everybody listening, uh, obviously there was a little tirade in the middle there, but I hope that you found this episode has given you some more whoosh, has given you some thoughts around how you can get rid of history and the layers that put over the top of everything and and what can you do to sort of open up the conversations and let's take away the dips and the troughs that are there so that we can make things more inclusive more accessible with the language that we use and with the way that we speak with people so that we're not afraid to ask for help we're not afraid to push at the boundaries of what we know we know that it might be a little bit more risky outside of our current knowledge field but that's okay that's why you can go and you can ask other people you want to know about property you can ask me you want to know about shares you can ask elizabeth we're here to help don't do nothing or please don't do nothing ask ask and we will do our best to help you and move forward uh and so a final thank you very much, Elizabeth. Thank you very much for being with me again. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you very much to you too. Very best wishes, everybody. And I will speak to you again next week. My mission is to help people like you understand what a wealthy life truly entails. Together, we'll identify your ideal lifestyle, leverage your resources to generate the necessary income through property investment, whether by teaching you how or by managing the process on your behalf. Let's inject some momentum into your wealthy life plans as you subscribe now to capture every episode of the podcast and then get in touch via my website, book a call. All of the details are in the show notes.